the videos and then taking notes of information in the videos. Really interesting stuff about the 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 rise of Mussolini. So there's two videos there you can watch. I think one's six minutes, one's eleven minutes. So we're moving on now. And how did Mussolini become dictator? This is very important, and as you can see, there's a lot of information on screen. So I'll quickly walk you through it, but make sure you're reading this in the book as well afterwards. So there, this is quite a lot of information here. So how did he become a dictator? At first, Mussolini's government was a mix of fascists and non-fascists. Um, but little by little, he took more power. In 1923, he passed something called the Acerbo Law, and this meant that the party with the most votes got two thirds of the seat in parliament. Okay, so for example, if you got even just one vote, you know, more than someone else, one percent more than another party, that party then auto automatically got two thirds of the seats. And that's quite complicated to, to understand. Um, but basically, in practice, it meant that Mussolini in elections only had to get one or two percent more than the other guys he didn't have to have this big big um majority he only had to have a tiny little majority of a seat or two seats and this meant that he was his party was then in charge and you have to remember that unlike today in politics where there's only kind of like two or three major parties in italy at the time i think there was something like seven parties eight parties uh all getting kind of like 10 percent 12 percent it's kind of a mix of politics at the time and this really stabilized the political situation in Italy. So in 1924, his fascist party, the Fasci party, they won the election. Uh, and, that, and they only won it by a few percentage, but it basically meant they got then two thirds of the seat. Okay, So they dominated parliament and they were the guys in charge. Uh, and the first thing that we kind of see him, how, we see that Mussolini is different from the others, is that it's number three there. There's a journalist, a socialist journalist, a left-wing journalist who is very against Mussolini, who criticised Mussolini, who didn't like Mussolini, and his name was Matei, uh, Mateitia. Um, my pronunciation there is probably wrong, but Matteotti, uh, the, the, the socialist journalist in Italy, and he was murdered by black shirts. So the black shirts, as you've seen, they were the followers of Mussolini. And they killed Matteo. Okay, so uh, no one was punished for this crime. The police didn't stop anyone. A journalist was was murdered, um, and no one kind of stood up and said anything. Um, and this is showing that you know Mussolini, he's not just a normal politician. His followers are extremists. That they're gonna attack and kill anyone they want, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. So this is where they're really they're in power, uh, and. The kind of rule of law is broken down a bit and and these guys are the law now that they're really taking hold of everything in italy um so the last one there and this is where it's a big one uh, in 1926 mussolini then had makes a big speech where he says there's no point that there doesn't need to be any more political parties in italy because we already have a, a major one so he bans all of our political parties every other group is, is banned in italy and they just pretty much have the fascist party, the fascists. Uh, and he's completely in control now in, after 1926. There's a bit of resistance to him, like some socialist communists can have protests. But the black shirts beat them off the street. And this is the really important one. Beforehand, the black shirts were, uh, they were unofficial. They were just his supporters. They were thugs on the street he used to beat people up. Uh, burn down people's houses and murder people like, like we saw they murdered the journalist um, where he brings them into the fold and he makes them official and he sets up a secret police to arrest his enemies and this secret police is made up of members of the black shirts so he gets his fascist supporters into the government as a secret police and as you could imagine anyone who went against Mussolini who spoke against them they, uh, they went and they attacked them so pause the video here make sure you, you read that over a few times take it down uh, and know this quite well there's a lot of information up there and um, read over that listen to that again a few times make sure that you know that so the key points uh how did Mussolini come to power he set up the first fascist party in milan in 1919 he promised strong government and to make italy great again uh, 
his uniform followers, the black shirts, attacked opponents like Matei the, the the journalist that we saw. The fear of communism increased his support. He threatened to seize power on the march in Rome, and he was eventually appointed prime minister by the king. Okay, so there's a few key points there. So, how did Mussolini take power? Pause the video here. Write down on a bit of paper and a copy the reasons you can remember from the slide. Go back over and check your answers. Make sure you're getting them all right. Um, and do that, you know, not just do that once, twice, three times. Make sure that you remember all the different reasons. Like, how did he take power? Because there was a lot there. As I said before, this is not easy stuff. This is a quite challenging, difficult uh, part of history. There's a lot of information here. So look over this a few times, okay? So, a bit of work you can do now, because we've done a, a lot of work there. Uh, on page 335 of your book, do questions one to six, okay? There's a few exam questions then at the end, you can do one of them if you want. Do one to six, do it without the notes, try and get, you know, try and memorize this inter if information. And then if you can't remember it, go back over the book and read over it, okay? As I said, this is not an easy chapter. There's a lot of information here. You need to go back over it, read it multiple times, okay? So, this is kind of like a, a, an extra class and a new bit of information. So make sure you get all that work done. You know that stuff well. And this is a new kind of little mini chapter. And it's what was life like in Mussolini's Italy. Okay, so only move on to this when you know quite well the stuff before this. Okay, because this is when it gets a bit more challenging. So 1939, Mussolini's in power. He's popular with Italians. Okay, he's very popular. People like him, um, he's a dictator, he controls everything, but he did have support with the majority of Italians. So it's important to note that, that we sometimes think of these dictators, oh, you know, they were terrible people that everyone hated. You know, at that time, a lot of people liked Mussolini, they thought he was doing a good job. It's important to note that. Um, so he used propaganda. Um, Basically, when you know it's lies that the leader makes to kind of make brainwash people uh, to think a certain way. So posters around the towns and villages explaining, you know, how great Mussolini was. There's films that are produced by the government always makes Mussolini look good, make Italy look good. Songs then, uh, the songs are produced and written and performed that are to praise Mussolini and say how great a job he's doing. Uh, and they all show Mussolini as great. And any sort of film or song that was anti-Mussolini uh, or anti the fascist was banned straight away. And the people who made it were arrested or killed. Okay, so students were taught to be loyal to him. Uh, boys were encouraged to be soldiers, and girls were encouraged to be mothers. Um, it, they we taught this in school, so schools became kind of like a training ground for the black shirts. Everything in schools, you know, was saying how great Mussolini was. Uh, and there's a youth club then for teenagers called the Balila. Uh, and that was a youth club for fascist teenagers. A lot of money was pumped into that. Very popular with people. They went on like trips to, they basically it paid for teenagers to go on holidays where they, they learnt about fascism and to praise Mussolini. Quite enjoyable activities for them. Like they were climbing up mountains and going to cinemas. And it was, Good stuff for them to do but it was all centered around how great Mussolini was and brainwashing them so when they grew up then they loved Mussolini um, uh, he also did a few kind of big infrastructure projects so stuff that he could point at and say look I did this for Italy I've made Italy great he basically he made motorways uh, he built the, I called the auto straight motorways uh, and he built lots of new towns so before people lived in slums he, he sometimes made new towns and housed them there. Uh, so he did build things. He, he forced kind of people into to working. And they, they did have full un employment. So that meant everyone had a job, basically. 99 point something percent of people were employed. There was no sort of social welfare or unemployment benefit. If you didn't have a job, you were given a job to do. Um, and it was producing, it made motorways built new towns, lots of new factories were produced. 
and that's a, the kind of characteristic of fascism is that everyone had a role uh, they were forced into it if they didn't want it um, and it was to produce something so if you weren't producing something you were kind of thrown away almost so, so there's some examples that are propaganda here uh, have a look at the different video the different uh, posters um, down here we've got a kid in the bailout of the youth movement uh, there's a poster up here of Mussolini looking good there's one here of him and there's Africa in the background and this is just before he invaded Ethiopia so he was kind of prep preparing the the nation of Italy that saying like look uh, this part of Africa is, is kind of rightfully ours obviously like nonsense but he, he had to brainwash people to believe in that to justify when he went to invade Ethiopia in Africa so the Lateran Pact then. So the Catholic Church were very wealthy at the time, as, as they are today. Uh, and that, of course, they were terrified of communists. So in the Russian Revolution, how we saw that some of the Russian um, revolutionaries, the communists, attacked churches. A lot some of the church land was taken off the church. Um, and basically the church were terrified of this. And they saw Mussolini as kind of a protector of the church. So they actually funded some of the fascist party um, and together the Catholic Church got together with Mussolini and they negotiated something called the Lateran Pacts. Yeah. The Lateran Pacts were basically the two things. Uh, Mussolini gave the Catholic Church a part of Rome and it's called like, the Vatican City, which is an independent state. So it's still today there, it's still an a independent uh, city-state completely independent of Italy um, but Mussolini basically gives the Catholic Church this new kind of country to do what it, what it, what it, what it, what it wants um, and the Vatican loved that, the church loved that and in kind of exchange the church then supported Mussolini so priests in church would have given speeches in support of Mussolini um, very very important because back then huge amounts of people went to church every Sunday. It was a big deal, it was very important. And the second thing there was that Catholicism was made the official religion of Italy. So the Catholic Church liked that, of course. People who were into religion, they liked that, and this made Muslims more popular, okay? So these are called Lateran Pacts. And this has come up in the short questions in the Junior Cert before. A few times they're asked, what were the Lateran Pacts? maybe name two things in the latter impacts that's come up a few times so make sure you know this so what was life like in Mussolini's Italy pause the video here uh, and answer these questions yourself so what were the latter impacts make sure you know that you don't have to look at the book you know make sure you memorize that you know it off by heart and what effect did it have okay so this is in the book have a read through it you can do a bit of work then on page 325 you can do questions six to nine so there's a few questions there about the latter impacts in life in, in the Mussolini and as I said before there's lots of videos on YouTube so you can look up life under Mussolini lots of the uh, history videos there are very informative they've got a bit more information than just a book and it's also always good to see kind of the picture of things so the key points there how did Mussolini establish a dictatorship uh, the Acerbo Law, the election in 1924, the murder of Matteotti, banned other political parties, and then the use of propaganda and the secret police. And then what were the latter impacts? Ended an old quarrel with the Catholic Church, set up the Vatican State. So the Catholic Church had been asking for the Vatican State for a long time. Um, but the Italian government before Mussolini didn't want to give it to them. Uh, but Mussolini kind of uh, gave them what they wanted to set up the Vatican State. And this made Mussolini very popular in Italy. Okay, it he, he also kind of raised his profile a bit around the world. So Catholic people around the world, they, they supported this. They liked that the uh, Vatican.